Hallelujah. I bless the name of God for this opportunity. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Daddy. Not only for the opportunity, but for impacting us with the word. For nurturing us even to the man we are today. Thank you very much. You know, sometimes my wife will always say, told me that you can't say two words or three without saying that he says this. Because um, you have influenced my life to the extent that you even become the Bible I read. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir. Um, pastors, I acknowledge you. Thank you, Pastor Sophie. Uh, Pastor Modestus, I appreciate you all. Pastor Faith, JFP, I bless God for all, all he's been doing in our lives. May his name be praised forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love what daddy said. He said that church is a lifestyle. He said church is a lifestyle. Something that you are doing over and over again, not only just on Sundays, you are doing it every time on a daily basis. You program your life. You program it into your system. Because I understand that habit is something that you are regularly doing. Something that you repeatedly do until it becomes part of you. It masters you. And you find out in this life, many things that we are doing, some of them has mastered us. Some of them we don't even know how it come about, how we start doing them. Some things, sometimes many things influences our character, our habit. Amen. For example, I understand um, the culture of Nigeria and also that of South Africa, especially the Kosa. Because I was uh, privileged to marry a Kosa lady. Amen. The most beautiful of them all. Um, there's something I picked up when I was growing up in, as a young boy in Nigeria. We find out that every young man is growing up with this great ambition, with this great dream. Could you imagine that at the age of 14, I've imagined myself building a mansion in my father's compound. At the age of 14, 15, I've been praying about that. So we have to grow up with that because that is how everybody is growing. Every young man in Nigeria, especially the Igbo tribe, is having that consciousness. Is here thinking of what will happen in 20 years' time. Is dreaming already what will happen in the next 30 years while he's still young. Then, I, when I come to South Africa, I understand that it's not just that same way here. I find out that most people here are living their life on today. They prefer to enjoy their life today. If you, are, if you try to abuse him or abuse her at her workplace, instead of thinking of tomorrow, thinking of next year, what this work will do, the salary you are paying him or her, what he will do in his life, he can't go, he can't think of those years, those uh, positive things that will happen. He will leave that job for you the next day because he insulted her. They live their life based on today. They want to have fun. Enjoy your life today. They don't care about what will happen tomorrow. Whereas Nigerians mainly, or most of them, are compassing their mind, overloading their mind with what I will do in the next 10 years. Average young South African guy is not bothered about building the mansions, all those things that you are stressing yourself about. So I find out that it's a habit, it's a lifestyle that we created for ourselves. Amen. And um, today, by the grace of God, I'm taking you on the topic I captioned, Breaking the Worry Habit breaking the worry habit because like I have explained 
everything that you are doing constantly is a habit so most of the time we worry ourselves over nothing but because it has become a habit hallelujah so i come today with a hammer to break every worry habit you have built all these days amen <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I want you to pay attention to the word of God. As I read, um, please help me with the uh, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Put it in NLT. Media, are you there to help me? Okay, thank you very much. NLT, NLT, New Living Translation. Okay, so worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. The effect of worry, when you are carrying the burdens of worry, you say it weighs you down. Hallelujah. You say worry weighs a person down. But an encouraging word cheers a person up. Because I find out that most of the time we carry the burdens of worry everywhere we go. So this teaching is aimed at making us to understand that worry, number one, interferes with your relationship with God. Number one thing worry does is that it interferes with your relationship with your maker. Because if you're always worrying, you won't even have time to acknowledge the things that the Lord has done for you. You won't even have time to be productive for your God. And another thing it does is that people that carry worries about are also consumed by the fear of the unknown. Anytime you are carrying worries about, you're always afraid of what will happen, what will happen. And then you are generating a negative force that will bring those negative things to happen in your life. That is why anything that you are mostly afraid of sometimes comes to you. Whatever you are always afraid of, if you are afraid that your children, maybe your daughters as they are growing, that they will get pregnant in your house, that is all your fear. Before you know it, one of, one of them might get that pregnancy and bring it home. Because that is where you have focus. Amen. That is where you have channeled all your energy. Anytime you are seeing her, you are seeing pregnancy. You are carrying the burdens of worry everywhere you go. Then it will generate the negative force that will bring that negative things to happen. Say it that are also consumed by the fear of the unknown. Another thing I want you to understand in this teaching is when life throws you off balance, when it seems like God has not has forsaken you, please maintain your calmness. That's one thing I want another thing I want you to get out of this teaching. Maintain your calmness. When it seems that the world has forsaken you, when it seems that everything is crumbling, that your world is crumbling right before you, just maintain your calmness. Hallelujah. You will not have a future if you cannot see tomorrow's possibility. Can I say that again? I say you will not have a future if you cannot see tomorrow's possibility. So if you're only killing yourself about what can I do today? How can I do this? How can I do this? You are not even seeing tomorrow's possibilities. It cannot come. Amen. So put on the screen the book of Matthew chapter 6 from verse 31 to 34. It's a conversant place we know. That's our text. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 31 to 34. 
okay and the bible says so don't worry about these things saying what will i eat what will i drink what will we wear yes verse 32 these things dominate the thoughts of the unbelievers amen he said when you are compassing yourself about with what will i eat what will i drink what will i wear he said that all these things is what the unbelievers they are uh, they are always worrying about about them they are always thinking about them that is what consumes their thoughts that's what dominates their thoughts but your heavenly father already knows hallelujah somebody he said your heavenly father already knows all your needs you know that you would the other translation say that he knows that you will have need of them so he will provide yes 33 let's read it seek the kingdom of god this is what you're going to do seek the kingdom of god above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need that is the word of god instead of worrying yourself how can i pay my rent how can i do this how can i take my children to school how can i do this how can i do that say focus on god if you see him as your source then he will supply your needs but if you do not see him as your source then you will be toiling with your own strength the grace and the favor to do exploit will not be available but it's only when you focus on god magnify him then your need will be supplied amen he said he knows that what you need he knows that you will need all these things okay verse 34 so don't worry about tomorrow can you tell your neighbor don't worry about tomorrow don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow we bring its own worries <laughs> hello i said for tomorrow we'll do what bring its own worry there's a, every day has its own challenges so when you are here for today you are not trying to live your life you are not trying to be happy you are not trying to be thankful to god for today all your worries about tomorrow because listen to me most of the things that make you to be to, to be sad all things that are making you to worry actually is not about today it is because you have think you have thought of tomorrow you have imagined how bad it will be it is like this today so how bad will it be tomorrow you see it you are negatively programming your tomorrow landlord has not thrown you out already but you are out in your mind you have you have programmed it you have seen it already that is why i say that what makes you worry is not about it's not today what you are killing yourself about is just tomorrow that is why the bible says don't worry about that tomorrow amen he said today's trouble is enough for the day live your life day after day just for this day amen it is when you are compassing your mind uh, carrying everything that will happen next year next 20 years. listen to me i'm not saying that you shouldn't care about tomorrow what you should do actually is to plan okay you plan about tomorrow but don't worry there is the big difference planning and the worrying there is very big difference there so don't just always say okay uh, pastor said that we should not worry or oh, no maybe we should just live our life for today whatever i have i finish it today that's not what i'm telling you i'm talking about being anxious because i said that worry is uh, uh, uh i said that worry is the feelings of being of uh being troubled about an actual or potential problem so when you are now being able to you are feeling imagining it that there will be trouble because if you didn't see it as a problem it will never be a problem 
Anything you did not see as a problem will not be a problem. So I want to change somebody's eyeglass today so that you can see it as an opportunity, not as a problem. If you're opportune to fly in the aircraft entering Cape Town, you will not, I went before it start landing, you will see all these big mansions, even this, this one as big as it is, to be like a match, a matches box. Amen. So I want to, I come here to lift up somebody. I want you to, to lift you so that you will now begin to see those your problems as little things. Because if you are flying with God, if you attain the height of God, you will see the challenges of this life very minute. Amen. So, those who burdens about are never productive for God. I said it again. They are never productive for God. Because Number one thing it will help, it will do. It. That's why you will see some people. They will tell you, "Daddy, I need to wait. You need, you need to give me time. Let me sort out myself." What is he trying to do? He's worrying. He wants to fix his life outside God. That is why you call for uh, for a Friday meeting. He will not be there because he wants to make sure he fixes his life. Even some people, it has affected that on Sunday too. They are still doing what? Fixing their life. They are waiting for when it will be, when they balance well, okay? Uh -huh. Then we will now come in full. I say you will not be productive for God when you are carrying the burdens of worry. Is somebody getting deliverance? Amen. So, please focus on God. It is God first. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God. Seek God first. He says, every other thing will be added. They will be added. Amen. So, worry is an evidence of doubt, while doubt is an evidence of no faith. When you live your life in worry, confident, the confidence you have in God withers away. I said, when you live your life in worries, the confidence you have in God depreciates. That is danger, the danger of worry. So I come here that, some, what, uh, that all of us will be delivered. Don't worry. Don't worry about them. God knows your needs. Amen. So when you are full of worries, God's word becomes important in your life. When you are full of worries, all the words that God gives, all the promises that are lined up for you, they become important in your life. Because you are using your worry to cancel the promise of God. Amen, somebody. So you... Don't use your worry to cancel the promise of God in your life. That he says you shall be great. And all that, all, you are, uh, all that is dominating your heart is how poor you are. How, how economy has become bad. How it will affect you. How it's affecting everybody. And you forgot that he says even they are saying there is casting down. You will be, you will be seeing lifting up. Don't worry. We are here to break the worry habits. Amen. Bible says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Say, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. He is the one that made you. So he knows what you need. Hallelujah. Everything that you need is in him already. Is available in him. Just be aligned with God's word. 
follow him. Other people say, follow who no road. It is God that knows the map. Follow him, simple. But most of the times, we make the mistake of not following him. We want to follow our own path. The wisdom of men, all your knowledge, what you think you know, you say it's just nothing outside God. Worry exposes you to another uh, effect of worry is that it exposes you to emotional breakdown, heaviness in the heart. Your health will be challenged because of worries. The rate of high blood pressure in the lives of young men today, 90% of it is because of worry. You carry the things that is not concerning you. The Bible says, leave it for the, dom- the tomorrow. Leave it there. You carry all, the, all of them on your head. You must apply wisdom. You must apply wisdom in whatever you are doing. Don't allow anything to weigh you down. He said, it exposes you to emotional breakdown. Heaviness in your heart forces your body mechanism to malfunction. As young as you are at the age of 30, 40, you run to the hospital, they say your your BP has climbed. What are you thinking? What is stressing you? The affairs of life. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 13. Proverbs 15 13. A good heart makes a face happy. Can I see Proverbs 15 verse 13? A glad heart makes a happy face, but a broken heart crushes the spirit. Don't allow your spirit to be crushed. That he always said, he said that you are the architect of your happiness. Your happiness is your baby. Most of the things that you stress about, you stress yourself about, they don't worth it. It's a decision. I decide to be happy. Sometimes I will, there's a lot of things that will be happening in my life. Uh, as the, uh, because I, of my orientation or where I'm coming from, I will, I will them, see, uh, the tendency to worry about it will come. But when I remember the word of God, I will just laugh. I tell my wife, don't worry, leave it. I will say, leave it. The God that brought me even to South Africa empty handed, when I come, I was squatting with somebody where we are paying 400 grand. I am sharing, he pay for, I will, he pay two, I will pay two. Then we bring it up and it will be 400. We pay for a month. Imagine that kind of time. I don't have money to enter taxi. What I jump in is the, in the train before I can come to church to play keyboard. I jump the train. Yeah, I remember sometimes it, it, I was sleeping. I don't know that the train has gotten to that time in the Peru, Peru market, that side. I don't know that it has, the people has alighted. Then the train was about to move. Then I have to jump and I roll on the floor <laughs> because it was it was a motion already before I jump out. I dust, my, I dust off myself, clean myself. I start coming to church and nobody knows. So when I remember all those things, I told my wife, relax. God has brought us from where we were before and take us to where we are today. He is not dead and he has not changed. Bible says that can you change the one hair to be white or black with your worries? You can't even add one cubit, one height to your height because of the way you are worried. In other words, he's trying to say practically that you can't make any changes with your worrying. 
that you are worrying about that your health did not change anything. Hallelujah, somebody. Why you should not worry? Number one, number one reason why you should not worry. The same God who created life in you can be trusted with the details of your life. That's what I was, I was explaining. The same God that created you will be trusted with the details of your life. Whatever that we need is in him. So he is that is the same God that created me, that know that I will come to South Africa, I will meet the opportunities I met, and then I will become who I am today. He is still God that can take me to the greater height I'm dreaming of. That is the only thing. You leave it in his hand. Leave your tomorrow in the hands of God. Can you preach to somebody next to you? Say, leave your tomorrow in the hands of God. Don't worry about tomorrow. Leave it in the hands of God. Hallelujah. Worry cannot help you. Rather, they are harmful to you. It exposes you to all kinds of sickness. Worrying cannot help anybody. That's what the Bible says, that it cannot add any COVID. It can't change anything. That you are here stressing about how it, the, what will happen tomorrow, what will happen next month, how you will pay your rent, how your, your children will go to school. Some people are not married because they are thinking, in this my state, how can I now bring in a woman and we become two? I'm struggling to feed myself now. How can I bring a woman and we become two? How can I succeed? Okay, when we give birth and we become three in this family or four, how will I now succeed? That's, how, that's why many people are not married. They are worrying. How can I do it? When I got married to my wife, I don't have one car. I don't even have anything. Thank God for home affairs. We go there, we marry, put the, thing, the ring, we go home free of charge. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> we put, we go there free of charge, put the ring and we go home. Then when the time for the celebration comes, in Cape Town, acts around, my wedding is still the best. It's the highest wedding. The wedding we did October 31st, 2022, 2021, right? It's still the highest. If you are around, if you attend that wedding, you know that we spent money. That wedding, we spent more than 450,000 rands to do it. So, but if I was afraid when I get money, money before I, I marry, maybe by now, <laughs> <laughs> By now, I might still be searching. But God delivered me. I want God to deliver you too. Say amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't worry. Just follow God. Follow him. He's the one that knows the road. He's the one that knows what will happen tomorrow. He has the tomorrow in his hands. And he will direct your path to meet the destiny, the things he has been predestined for you. Why we are suffering most of the time is that we miss the track. That is why we were not at the place that we're supposed to be, the place of our destiny at the right time. Then it takes us years. It takes us time, hard labor, for us to find our way back. But if you can find your way back into the, the, manual, the, the owner's manual of your life that is in God's hands, then he will direct you into your path. Because he had a, his Bible says that he has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for you. The thought of good and not of evil to bring you to the, that expected end. 
But most of the time, what happens is that at the long run, we miss him. We miss the track. When he's saying, telling us, follow this way, follow here. No, we now do our own. That is why sometimes we now miss the track and then it takes us years and the hard labor for us to find our way back. May God help us to restrain our step in the name of Jesus. God will not allow those who depends absolutely on him to be stranded. Did you hear that? He said he cannot allow anybody that absolutely depends on him to be stranded. He will always make a way. My life is a living testimony. Even in the darkest night, even when it seems like things are crumbling right before me, I will still look and I will see. The problem is that you have not looked beside you. Just even in the midst of that trouble, you will still see it. The Bible says he will make a way of escape. You must provide it. Most of the time you didn't look well. Then you are suffering. Hallelujah. Sorry to say this. I was telling my pastor, Pastor Modestus, I said that time I hear that you are trekking from Be uh, Bellevue to, to Goodwood. That I, I told him you did not look well. Because there is a provision. I am traveling from I am driving from uh, Kelso River, passing Bellevue to come to church. What is what takes you from just saying, take me along? Do you understand? Do you understand? <laughs> Sorry for the emphasis. <laughs> but are we getting the picture now? You did not just look because it, it, what it takes is just, brother, uh, please, uh, please pass by me and take me my car. Got issue. Simple. And I will be very much glad to help out. You understand? So, so that's what happens. Sometimes we are laboring, we are suffering because we did not look well. Because he said, he's a faithful God that said he will make a way, even in the midst of that trouble. He will still make a way. If it happens to be that I don't have any money on me, even to finance my business, before you know it, somehow, somehow, Somebody will call me and say, okay, keep this money for me. And I'll use it to run that business and make the profit and bounce back. There's a time it was so hard on, on my side. Somebody put, uh, I think, 7.5 uh, 7 million naira in my account and say, leave it. And they just abandon it there. And that time is very, very critical for me. I use this money and pick up. I... <laughs> I, I use that money and bounce back. Because he is God. He will surely make a way. He touched that person to put the money there and then say, okay, leave it there. <laughs> and inspired me to use it. <laughs> I use the capital and bounce back. Before it, it takes about uh i think up to two months in my hand before he asks of his money and bring account i now transfer by that time as simple as that god can always make a way he can never leave you stranded so stop worrying yourself i love how daddy said it he said that all he knows that every first of the month he will pay his rent he don't know how he's coming he said even sometimes on 29, 27, he don't yet know. But he know that this rent must be paid. But if he has, if um, on some people, even from 15th, they have started worrying. Hey, the month is coming to an end, though. how can I pay rent? Becoming afraid of the unknown, what will happen? and you are crippling the hand of God. You are making the words and the promise of God in your life to be potent because of your worries. Because worries is, is canceling the promise of God. Amen.
Oh, time is flying. Um, okay, okay. Uh, last part of my teaching: how to break the worry habits. How to break it. Okay. So number one is leave your tomorrow with God. In the book of Psalm, chapter one twenty-seven, verse one and two, the Bible says, "Unless." The Lord build the house. The builders are building in vain. Unless he watches the city, the watchmen are waking up in vain. Just leave your tomorrow in the hands of God. Leave your tomorrow in the hand of God. That tomorrow that you are stressing about, leave it in the hand of God. Then when you do that, God will not know that you acknowledge him. He will not know that you depend on him. Because what we are trying to do by worrying is that we try to do it on our own. Trying to separate, separate our, uh, our income or our achievements from the grace of God. So that it will be based on our own level. What I can do. Because when you are worrying, you are just trying to uh, explore what you can do or what you have not done or what will befall you. So, you are, in other, in other words, trying to tell God, I don't need you here. I can do it. I can do it on my own. And then, it's a choice. God creates you, create us with choice. Giving us choices. You can make the choice. When you say that, he will stand by. He will just keep, stand out and just keep watching you. Let you do it on yourself. That is why I say that you are crippling the promises, the hand of God that's supposed to be working in your life with the way you are worrying. Because imagine that I'm go work, going with my daughter and then we saw a masquerade. Instead of my daughter to come and hold me, he will be worrying what the masquerade will do. Hey, daddy, 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 daddy. And before you know it, he starts running on his own, on her own. The masquerade can pursue her, can chase her, and flog her, or do anything. Because he leave where he's supposed to be. So what that is the essence of what is happening when you are worrying. You are running away from God to do it on your own. So one of the way, the first way to, to break the worrying habits is to live your life, your tomorrow in the hands of God. Whatever that comes your way, he knows. Just hand it over to him. The songwriter says, leave it there. Just drop it there. Take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. He will surely deliver you where you put your trust in him. Take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Just drop it there. Take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. He will surely deliver you where you put your trust in him take your problems to the lord and leave it there amen <laughs> hallelujah i'm rounding up worrying about tomorrow does not enable does not enable you to escape future troubles it only weakens you and makes you unfit to cope with the challenges of tomorrow when it eventually comes. Did somebody hear that? I say worrying about tomorrow does not enable you to escape from the future troubles, but rather it weakens you and makes you unfit to cope with the challenges of tomorrow when it eventually comes. So there's no need stressing yourself about it about those what will happen 
Amen. For believers, when tomorrow comes, tomorrow will sp uh, swing the, its door open and the power and the promise of God will be waiting to welcome you into the new day. That's the consciousness I want you to carry. That as tomorrow comes, the provision is coming with it. When we get to the bridge, we cross it. But we, what happens is that most of the time, we hear that the bridge is, there's a bridge ahead. You start jumping. There's a bridge ahead. You are jumping. Maybe before you, before you know it, you are now at the bridge. Before you get to the edge of the bridge, you are there. You are jumping. Oh, you are inside the bridge already. You jump in. Live your life day to day at once so that you don't have to make that mistake. Don't be faster than your shadow. Hallelujah. Let today be a gateway to a glorious future. Plan and program your tomorrow. That is what you need to do. Don't worry about it. Just plan it. Plan ahead of time. Okay? Do the things you can do. And the ones you cannot do, you leave it. The ones you can do, you make sure you do it. Then the ones you couldn't do, leave it. That is told us the other time that whatever that God has, cannot give you is not yours. Whatever God cannot give you is not yours. Yes, everybody will dream I will buy private jet tomorrow. But if it didn't come, then it is not mine. Are you getting it? If God didn't give me, give it to me, it is not mine. It is not a must that everybody must buy private jet. It's not a must that everybody must own a car. There are people that are in their destiny, there is no car. And then you are here killing yourself. It's not a must that everybody must marry. I don't know if I'm saying the right thing. It's not a must. Then you are killing yourself. Nobody is asking for my hand in marriage. I'm at the right time. I'm, I'm at the right age now. I'm, I'm approaching 40. Nobody's. If it is not in your destiny, Nko. If this lady, that was the husband, the bitch that was singing, what's the name again? Uh, if Osinachi has remained single, maybe by now he will still be singing, going around the world. Maybe it is not in your destiny for you to marry, and you are stressing yourself, manipulating your way into marriage. Maybe you go there, they will kill you. Amen. Don't worry. Do the one you can do and leave the rest in the hand of God. Living one day at a time keeps us from being consumed with worry. Living, and that one is how Mama, Mama always mentioned it. So that's how you live. Just live it. It keeps you from being consumed with, wor with worries. Because you know that God can never fail. You know he can never fail. The provision must be there. Hallelujah. Remember, you come to the earth with nothing. So whatever you have, be it little or big, it's just a gift. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you. Because I have a car, does not make me to look down on you as if you don't have it. Because I know it's just a gift. It's not because of my hard labor or how wise I am, how diligent I am in my business. No, it's just how God, it is just that God bring it my way. Simple. So don't allow anybody to intimidate you because most of the things, okay, my friends are having this, my friends are doing this, my mates are doing this. And it closes your eye 
from your mates that are in the graveyard. Don't worry. Amen. I believe that somebody has received deliverance today. Put, learn to live your life in the hand of God. Leave it there. Let Him pilot the affairs of your life. And all these challenges, all this stress about this life will be things of the past. May God bless you. Be on your feet. Lift up your hands. Begin to thank God for His word. Thank God for the deliverance you've received. Thank God for the transformation. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have opened our eye to understand that we are belittling you by our worries. We are making your words impotent by our worries. That who carries worries about, they are unproductive for God. Father, Lord, we pray that you forgive us. We pray for forgiveness. Forgive us for worrying. Forgive us for belittling you, belittling your power, for looking down on you. Forgive us for trying to do it on our own, whereas we have you. Make that prayer, make that prayer. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord.